the, the people who monitor those things, right? Uh, environmental agents are making sure we're not all inhaling toxic air all the time. And food inspectors are making sure that food production facilities aren't, you know, they're following the rules that your food is safe, it doesn't have chemicals in it. And the tax auditors are making sure that everyone's contributing to the system. So these are things that you have to do. You have to contribute to the public well being. Right? So every one of these people has the right to charge people criminal. So it's worth looking at in a criminal justice class on your process. And so when we look at developing these systems of monitoring and sanctioning, what we end up seeing is that they require resources. Every single type of monitoring and sanctioning we ever develop always require resources. It will require some amount of people, funding, time, equipment, uh, technology, whatever. Uh, but it will have costs. It will cost something. There will be resources that we need for it. And so limitations or restrictions on those resources, that is budget restrictions for your police department, uh, budget, uh, the very few people working as EPA agents and investigating pollution, all these limitations on the, the, the requirements we need are going to lower our monitoring and sanctioning capabilities. Right? So what does that end up doing to people who might want to try to break the rules? Well, that means that some rule breaking might go undetected and unpunished. That means that some people who are aware of this might be more motivated to try to break the rules since they know the chances of getting caught and punished are low. Right? And so we know then that increasing the resources for monitoring and sanctioning is going to increase the group's control over the group. It's if we increase if we have a way of making sure everyone's uh, <coughs> showing up to practice. Uh, does anyone here in the marching 110? No one? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. And how many, how many people are in the marching 110? 240. 240, right? How hard would it be to make sure every single person showed up for every single practice and they were constantly doing everything they're supposed to do in order to help the marching 10 on 110 be the best band in the It's pretty hard, right? That's a lot of organization, a lot of coordinating and, and monitoring, right? So uh, the, more, the more people you give leadership roles to within the Marching 110 to make sure their people are there, right? The more monitoring you have, the more agents you assign, you're going to increase your monitoring capability, right? And that's going to increase the probability that members are going to fulfill their obligations because they're going to realize it's more likely they're going to get caught not showing up for band practice, right? Or they're going to get caught, you know, not paying their taxes, right? Um, <coughs> So again, yeah, group members are more likely to show up for practice, pay their taxes, and not dump toxic waste in the river when we reduce restrictions. Um, but now we have a critical thinking point. Because if monitoring and sanctioning are going to increase the chances for rule breakers to get caught, then, and if control motivates group members to fulfill their obligations and contribute towards these group goals, whether we're looking at a soccer team or society, right, then would groups work best by removing all the restrictions on monitoring and sanctioning, right? Would creating limitless surveillance and increasing corrections funding, maybe building more prisons, hiring more corrections officers, <coughs> would these things result in a better society than we have now? What do you guys think? No? But isn't this a good type of power? So she asked, are we trying to get rid of crime or are we trying to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do? And that's what we're talking about here in groups, right? Making sure everyone's fulfilling their responsibilities. Right? Okay, and you're trying to do that. I just feel like increasing sanctioning, it's not going to help. Okay. It's only putting pressure on people that probably would have done it anyways. What about increasing monitoring? No? I just think, I don't know, I just think that's silly. I feel like I said before, you're putting more pressure on people. Right, so some people are not really going to commit crime. Increasing monitoring is not really going to alter their, it's not going to deter them from committing crime. Right. All right. Well, this is going to be what we need to think about for the remainder of the lecture. Would society be better if we increase, if we lowered the restrictions, made limitless surveillance, limitless investigations, limitless detention, right? Uh, 
Hopefully you guys will be able to answer the question. Yeah. So right now, we're going to find out. We're going to do a quick thinking activity on the process. And so... Okay, and I'm going to find a way to make this available to all of you so you can review it for your exam. Alright, because uh, you might have more questions coming from this. And so, but, so don't worry about that, but um, a lot of it reviews what we've talked about so far today in the introduction. So that was important. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to play the token game. And I need six volunteers. Come on down. Yep. You don't have to be under 21. Anyone? <laughs> yep. Come on. Four more. Four more. Because what you do have as you pick up a chip is the option as you walk away <coughs> to slip it in your pocket, okay? To steal it. That's something you can do, all right? And at the end of the game, what we're going to do is all the chips that are in these two cups down here, we're going to total them up, and everyone gets added to their score half of that total number, all right? So if there's 100 chips in there, everyone gets an extra 50 added onto their score, okay? But if you steal a chip, it is worth its full value. Right? So if you steal 100 chips, they're worth 100 chips. So they're twice as valuable as contributing them. Right? Now, for the, rule, for the rule enforcers, when you catch someone stealing a chip, hmm? <laughs> when, it, when you're a rule enforcer, when you catch someone stealing chips, you actually get the full value of that chip now. Okay? So it's a, you, you profit just as much as the person who stole it, and they no longer profit. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep? Yeah? Everyone understand the rules? Yes? Okay. So we're going to do four rounds, and all right, for this one, I need four workers, so who wants to be a worker? Yeah, okay, uh, just come over here, and then two of you are going to be rule or, yeah, two will be rule enforcers. Okay, so you, you four are the workers, yep, yeah? okay, you guys go to line up at the table there, and you guys, yeah, you two are the rule enforcers. Now, in this round, if you have... You have no restrictions as rule enforcers. All right, you are completely allowed to stop people whenever you want, make them empty their pockets. Um, you can uh, now if someone makes it back and forth um, and they've already stolen a chip from a previous round, that can't be confiscated. But if it's one they just stole, then then you ought to. Can we not take one chip down that time? You can take more than one chip. Oh, you can you can take out more than one chip if you want, but you're only supposed to take out one chip. Okay. So right. that stealing to take more than one. Sure, that's a crime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and we're gonna do this for um, 60 seconds. I'm gonna set a timer real quick. <laughs> All 
All right. So, you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah? 60 seconds, get your highest score. Oh, and whoever in the end has the highest score, I'm paying 10 bucks to. Yeah. Yep. So, be really motivated to do your job. All right? Ready, set, go. <laughs>
Alright, so is everyone ready? 60 seconds. Go. <laughs>